Well, hello, and you should be most welcome back to Jimidis, and we're back into From the Depth with some more Slabman challenges. This time, we will pitch Hedgehog's Slabman Delad, which is this beautiful design we can see in front of us. And now it's getting repainted to my colors. All right. So uh, we got a drone and he does not and we shall see what happens. The mortars are launched. Now Hedgehog's slab man look pretty cool. It looks uh, pretty slab man e, but it's pretty own uh, a little touch design there. We got a pack turret there. Very interesting. It got a quite unfortunate hit on it. However, uh, we should see the original My Slab Man design, which is of course upgrade from the one in the, uh, well, the one that uh, is on the workshop. It is upgraded. But in any case, it's not very good. Ooh, we have got some green stuff in there. Oh my god. I think that the Slab Man, man, the original Slab Man seems to have the upper hand here. The mortars are getting through. It seems that Hedgehog did not put the budget into active defenses. Oh my god! <laughs> Lucky deflection. Yeah, well, in any case, um, not so much uh, resources has been put in active defenses, and a lot of people uh, do actually promote this idea because it can be better put at dealing more damage. But I am a little bit unsure that it has been put in dealing a lot more damage. Let's see here. The pack turret is a little bit sad, it seems. And oh my god, these poor turrets are getting sandblasted away. Well, this Labman version has some great uh, campaign capabilities, but it seems not to be really. Um, it's already 5% behind. Uh, it does not engage the helicopter, which uh, it could have been a good idea if it dealt with that. It's only dealing minor damage, but it's also provide better detection for the uh, Slabman main, main ship here too. So it should help with getting mortars and stuff like that hitting. Hopefully, that's the thought at least, it should do that. I don't know exactly how much it uh, provides that. Uh, it should in theory, but you know all that from the depth theory and reality is not always the same thing. All right. I These seem to fire very rarely. They change target all the time. One thing I want, I just want to pause here a little bit and see. Do we have any issues here, I wonder? We seem to have... We seem to have an intact system here. Yeah, okay. It doesn't seem to be any problems. They do have ejectors and everything like that. It, it, it would be very sad if it says... I don't remember seeing them fire, but of course they have fired because the original Slam Man does miss 1% of its health. So something has been coming in and dealing its damage. And it's most likely more than packs. Uh, that one pack. In any case, who knows? Uh, it's not dealing much damage now, that's for sure. I think we can go and assess the damage on the original Slabman to see uh, what has happened over here. So, uh, the three AOG Dome 67mm check. <laughs> Check in my Teespring store if you want to see the water bottle that I uh, modeled this turret's caliber after. In any case, that sounds really weird. It is, but it's also funny. Uh, the main gun is still online too. Oh! 
If he had gotten a really lucky strike, maybe he could have AI sniped us, maybe. But I think this looks like, um, like impact packs. And here we got probably some damage from APS, yeah. Looks like some APS damage there, okay. But otherwise, it's pretty much intact. And of course, its repair bot is due, due, uh, in, well, is due repairing it slowly. So it's like a little bit more healthy nowadays. Well, and we're just sandblasting it away here. So I think it really looks like this, uh, this battle won't tur turn or change. I'll let it run a little bit more and come back soon. All right. The battle has been going a little while longer and um, it hasn't fired a single damage dealing shot even once. And the helicopter as well as the main ship is still alive and well pumping in damage towards the hedgehog slab man the lad. I really like the design of uh, this slab man rebuild but unfortunately it's combat capabilities does not really reach up to its uh, good design uh, so it will not be making it through to the next battles and we will be going on to uh, the next battle because indeed this ship has not fired once towards the uh, original slab man yet uh, after its uh, initial heavy damage it received so we'll have to conclude that it will not either and in any case a very beautiful build but the uh, combat strength is a little bit lacking so let's move on next up we have lieutenant powered by greeds hc minuteman very close of winning the design challenge it looks absolutely beautiful does it not uh, it does uh, and it is indeed a hydrofoil and you may have seen from an earlier video I have actually built a hydrofoil for Lieutenant Powered by Greed because Lieutenant Powered by Greed is supporting the channel and has thus gotten a little small build built for him. Now I think his hydrofoil is probably better than mine but we should indeed see in this little video what it can provide. Right. So here it was, it looks like. It looks absolutely amazing and has a top speed of like, I think it was like, was it like 100 or something? In any case, it has a very fast top speed and I'm pretty excited about this battle. And by the way, thanks a lot to Lieutenant Parbag Reed for supporting this channel, of course, together with the other commissioned officers in the army of Jimadis. We'll be listing them. Uh, at the end of the, of the video. All right, so the Minuteman is going in and oh, it's trying to zap those. That is something we need to look at, yes. This is a little, I think it's a short range laser uh, meant at uh, taking out incoming big stuff. I don't think the cram has fired yet, have they? No? Interesting, interesting. Well, the interceptors are popping in there and trying to intercept. Are we aiming? Okay, the Minuteman is doing some weird motions. And it is going for the helicopter. Oh my god. That is some big explosions down to 72 percentages. It is falling out of the sky like a very sad thing. Well then, then it doesn't have to bother with that thing anymore. Will be interesting to see if it takes out that missile no it does not but I think it may damage it 
Really looks like our lieutenant has put some frag on the missile interceptors. And I will have you know that uh, putting frags on missile interceptors does not uh, increase their uh, um, performance. All right, so what's happening here? The helicopter is DQ'd. Uh, the slab man is behind at five percentages. Really looks like the Minuteman is going to do some pretty good results here. Oh yes, that missile did take out, um, that missile did get taken out rather. I think these are diff guns, are they not? The small ones, I think they are anti-munition diff guns probably. What do we have here? Let's see here. Oh, we can we can check later if they got shot down. All right, so the original slab man doesn't look too good here. We have some pretty pretty big holes, and our forward propulsion is missing. And you can see the minute man is uh, doing some pretty quick maneuvers there. Oh my god, that's some that's some quick stuff. You can see those lambs are sniping those shells there too not that one though all right and we got the diff guns popping in there i don't know how much damage they do we're really trying to sandblast off the minute man but you know what i think i think it's gonna win and actually I think Powered by Greed made such a cool little uh, Minuteman out of the Slabman shape. I think it's uh, it's almost not Slabman, but it looks so cool. It's um, I'm kind of hoping for it to win. <laughs> oh man, did you see that? Oh my god. Yeah, well, that's the power of cram for you. You can see this crater inside of here. Oh, yes, that's some big damage. Our engine power is severely taken down. Original Slabman is at down at 87%, while Powered by Greed's Minuteman is at 97 Well, I do think we already know who is going to win this battle, but again, we shall see. And uh, the dual barrel design on cramps is something that some people don't like for efficiency reasons. Uh, but I do think that the redundancy added by doing this is just definitely worth it. Man, these turrets look cool. It's like some polished steel here that works very well together with the white. Yeah, well, I'm really stuck at my gold color, but maybe I should start using some uh, some silver as well. Well, we're coming in with the next batch of shots. They're aiming for the aft of the ship. Well, those missed. And it's, of course, again, dealing some big damage and a little bit of EMP on there, too. Well, that's something I like to have as well. Oh, darn. We are receiving heavy damage. I think that Powered by Greed's Minuteman is so fast that it probably doesn't need to worry about our uh, cram uh, mortars at all. This one could hit, but I think it's lambs or yeah, I think that got shot down by uh, diffs or something. I didn't see that lamb coming in there. I think the lambs focus more on the larger penetrating uh, AP frag um, thing we got on there, most likely. Pretty smart idea too. Somehow we are still sandblasting away some parts from the Minute Man, but right now Hard by Greed is really acing this. Well, that's some nice nice damage going on there okay next cram barrage this is absolutely terrifying look at that big frag big frags 
big holes. Missing turrets. Oh my god. Indeed. The Army of Jimidism's original Slabman Heavy Cruiser has indeed lost, which is a win for Lieutenant Powered by Greed. Congratulations indeed. But as all of my ships, um, they tend to continue fighting even when they're spawning. That's, that's how I like to build them. Pretty uh, resilient like that. It's gonna be interesting. Will it reach through? And oh yeah, this is a pretty cool little laser system. It looks absolutely super cute and it works pretty well too. EMP insulated and everything. Good job. Well, let's move on to the next battle. Next up, we have Justin DVD AOG Slab Man, which is this fantastic army of Jimidism and deep water guard amalgamation. Which we might have to use if we ever team up with the Deepwater Guard when we play the campaign. We we'll, might need to drag out this particular build for the fun of it, just uh, for that occasion. But of course, it also depends a little bit on how it performs, because we don't want it to hit itself. Oh my god, this looks a little bit... oh no. That was very sad. Wow, we seem to have some issues there at launch and that missile popping in there, darn it. That, that feels quite unlucky. Well, damn, <laughs> poor thing. Uh, looks like the original slab and put in some uh, penetrating capabilities there other than s and blasting. We're gonna follow this little cram barrage here because I do believe that these crams are pretty strong. But are they strong enough to get through the defenses? And the answer is kinda, yeah. Did not reach through further than the surface layer, however, which is unfortunate for it. Uh, the Wanda on board is already very sad. But that happens. Now, I don't know why what my missiles is doing here. Let's look at these missiles, however. Oh, we have... Oh, okay. Justin DVG spent a lot on the uh, Deepwater Gorge Slabman's um, little uh, interceptor missiles. Or, no, it's actually the... Uh, I think it's I that spent so much on the interceptor missiles. It probably just retained them. I don't quite exactly remember, but probably something like that. Oh my god, are we going to head for a collision? Because if we are, Justin does have a pretty good advantage having those spikes on the bow. The helicopter... Wherever that is... It seems to be alive and well. Trying to combat those interceptors. I don't think it w my little helicopter will get through the uh, Slabman's um, interceptors or uh, lands anytime soon. I should clean up some uh, smaller missiles like that. Okay, it looks like the original Slabman ha does some pretty bad moves showing its backside to Justin. Not very smart, but uh, that's what it does. We got some EMP damage there. Well, one thing I really thought about a little bit, that's of course that um, it would probably be good if the Wanda was a little bit expelled using a tractor beam before it uh, launched like that, because I think it had some collision that made it explode on the landing pad. It looked cool though. In any case, let's see how it uh, progresses. The original Slabman is at 93% and Justin DVG's AOG uh, Slabman is at 93% as well. It's completely even. Isn't that quite interesting? 
we are really throwing similar similar setup to each other however oh here we have a sieves cannon uh, Justin has a main cram cannon and the original slabman has a main APS cannon bam it is getting through I wonder if that's hollow point it kind of does look like hollow point the originals uh, turret here is still there and it is indeed providing some penetrative shots I believe question is if the DPS from the cram or the APS will be holding this uh, battle on or not well we shall indeed see momentarily some big explosions is happening Justin DVG is indeed in the lead we're gonna follow this cram shell once again to see what's happening uh, ooh, those large VLMs are quite scary indeed. Looks like an explosive shell mostly. Right. <clears throat> Another one is popping in here. And this one is a... That's probably... Either it got through a hole or it's a uh, AP explosive with a fuse. All right. It seems we are quite even once again. I think it's going to depend a lot on where those cram shells will hit. Because if we can disable uh, the main gun, I think that would be pretty. Um, well, I, I do think that Justin would win this indeed. However, if my arm piercing frag setup will be able to target this turret soon, it is already damaged and open, but thanks to the dual barrel and 3D Tetris design, it does have some versatility. I think it's, no, this is 2D Tetris. It's just the damage made it look. In any case, it's vertical connection rods does provide it with some uh, redundancy. So it won't be taking out just like that, which is very good for it. Justin DVG 89% and original Slamon 87. Wow, it's really close. And I do think that Justin DVG has made a proper refit of the uh, Slabman. I think this is uh, this is like a proper refit. This is not a rebuild. This is like a refit. Uh, which is very fun to see because um, a lot of people made some pretty cool rebuilds and that's cool too but it's really cool to see a uh, refit because you know renovate the slab man well in any case some people did try to send in ships that didn't even use the slab man hull and that just loosely resembled it but those were um, declined and uh, we did request them to send in some ships that indeed was somewhat based on this lab man. So that, that, like that's that. We had some uh, rules. We're not super strict like that, but uh, we, do, we do need to follow some rules. Right, slab man is at 87 and Justin's DVG is at 86 oh my god it seems that it's pretty close still the battle is turning in no particular order indeed not this is quite interesting this could go either way And the mortars are not getting through either, which is good for both of the ships. <laughs> All right. Justin is 1% behind now. Will the cram cannon suffer too much damage? What will happen next? Can the original Slabman's APS get through the lamps? I think they can. Oh my god, Justin is starting to let in some mortars. That might not be very good. Ooh, 
dealing some nasty damage here. I wonder if the power is a little bit hurt. Big missile coming in there. It seems it's been a while since the cram cannon fired last. No! Talking about the trolls, as we say here in Sweden. Here they come. So, oh, darn. That is very close to the laser core there. And oh, wow. The main turret is hanging on on a few blocks of heavy armor. Well, while that's not a little, if we get a similar hit in a similar vicinity, that was so close, uh, the entire turret would fall off. All right. The turret is online still, but it is somewhat damaged here. Wow, this battle is really super close. And then, uh, then uh, Justin did lose the Wanda really early because it seemed it had some collisions when it uh, kind of uh, tried to launch there. The helicopter is somehow hanging on there. That's pretty fun. I think it stays a little bit too close, so I don't think it gets many, many opportunities to deal much damage. Well, we do sometimes. Might be the difference between losing and winning, who knows? Oh, it does throw in some shots there, so that's something. Alright, we do have a big missile coming in there. And another one. Oof. 80 versus 82. Wow, yeah. This is very, very even. Uh, it is a nice, very nice refit. I think Justin did a cool job here. And oh, these turrets also work as Civ's turret, trying to shoot at incoming crabs. You know, I think that time spent on shooting upwards would be better spent at shooting uh, towards the other slab man. Uh, spending too much on Civ systems might actually be a bad move because you want to spend as much as possible on dealing active damage. On other hand, the uh, original Slabman does look very sad and it's soon going to collect some penalty points for sinking, I believe. We shall see indeed. The original Slabman is indeed in the lead, technically. And seems no of the systems are really completely disabled or anything like that. Well, we shall see indeed. The gun, the big gun is still online. Yeah, here we'll, we're, we're just gonna pause a little bit here and see how far. Oh, it didn't reach so far, did it? Not really. Well, I recognize those part. Seems like we're sandblasting a little bit underwater here. 80, 78 versus 82. That's very close. That's so close. I am hoping a little bit that uh, Justin's uh, DVG will win this because it looks pretty cool. So I want to see it in future battles too. Sadly, I think the Wanda will just explode uh, next time we spawn it too. Maybe it was just unlucky, but if it wasn't, uh, stuff like that can be uh, good to double check that they actually work before uh, saving a final version. I should make a little uh, instant tutorial about making carriers, uh, because having something like that should be quite useful actually. Um, what we do is we have a tractor beam that kind of uh, puts the uh, vehicle in question a little bit above and then drags it down when it's docking and uh, like basically gives it a little launch that makes it very unlikely that it will hit anything important. 
but anyways i'll come back with that with another instant tutorial while we're talking about stuff like that we are going to of course mention the commissioned officers in the army of jimmyism who are kindly and honorably supporting the channel and making this much more viable for me to spend lots of time doing. So thanks a lot, um, Commander Ike the Boaster, Commander Ejean, Lieutenant Asteria, part by Green, Tyler Ross, LCG Canyon, Vincent Veritas, and our cadets Robert and Shark93. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel and also special thanks to our stellar Gmodist LCG Canyon Saha who is our YouTube member, which you can also uh, select to support the channel. So, once again, thanks a lot. You're really making this much more viable. In any case, the battle is still ongoing and uh, it really looks like the original Slabman is going to win this. I am kind of a little bit surprised it hasn't been gaining penalty points, but I do believe that is because it's moving forwards and sticking its front above water. Uh, if anything sinks, I have a special little altitude disqualificator that will disqualify anything that's uh, just riding a little bit too low, aka sinking. And I guess this isn't technically sinking, it's just borderlining. Alright then. The, the crams are still going though. But unfortunately, it is aiming for us under water here. And those shots will of course always hit, because there is no super cavity thing on uh, uh, crams. Which is a little bit sad, I would like to see some super cav crams, that would be crazy. If we look at the cram shell though, it does look like it has that super cavity pattern, but I guess that's just normal rifling. And that's kind of weird. Doesn't... Huh, doesn't the... Wow, I never thought about this, but the cram shells... Let me pause here a little bit. Doesn't the cram shell look like shotgun slugs that are made for smoothbore shotguns with like rotating rifling like this on them? So, yeah. They look like shotgun slugs, don't they? Made for unrifled barrels. So, I guess because. <laughs> because the. Uh, the cram projectile does have rifling. On it, it means uh, it's made for uh, smooth bore, which means that when a cram cannon fires its shot, uh, the projectile doesn't get a spin from inside a barrel. It only gets the spin, or it gets the spin from the rifling on the projectile itself, not from the barrel, which is kind of weird. Yeah, well. Any case, that's apparently how it works. Oh my god! I completely missed... Man! I completely missed! The original Slabman got DQ'd! Man, when did, it has, when did this happen? I was just talking too much. Well, congratulations, Justin GVG. That's, that's a clear win. Awesome! Uh, we'll be moving on to the next battle, of course. Uh, this helicopter can't deal with this man. It's not even... Yeah. It's just a matter of seconds before any... Okay, got it. Any case. GG, I'm happy you won. Because I, wa I want to see if that, uh, if that flyer will actually not detonate on first start. Let's move on to the next battle. Congratulations. Alright, this is the last new ship we will see in battle. After this, we'll pitch the ships against each other and see who's the best. So, this is Kevin Tri's HMS Rice, and it's kind of a very short and down slab man design. It does have a lot of shields going on there, and of course, that does not make it better, but if any of the shields get taken out, it has a backup. Alright, that's some pretty, uh, pretty big. Pretty big shells coming in there. Ooh, that's fast. 
I would like to see... I would like to follow one of these shots here. Okay. Man, they are fast. I think they are closing in on something like... Uh, 2000 meters per second. What is this now? This is a Sabo Frag... Uh, what is that now? It's a timed fuse, is it not? Bomb! Well, it's deeply penetrating, alright. Well, most people use AP frag, and that's uh, very good because if you use Sabo frag, you really decrease the detonation capability of that uh, shot. But on the other hand, you can get in really deep if you use Sabo, so putting that payload down to 25% might be a worthwhile investment if your enemy has some juicy interiors, which I do believe the original Slabman does indeed have. It's also kind of spacious, so we'll see. The lamps are really trying to take out these ones, uh, and they are... They're doing a decent job of doing that, actually. So, Kevin Try opted for some more long-range lamps. <clears throat> the original Slabman used some more short-range ones. So that's some different uh, design choices we can do here. Kevin Try is 1% in the lead. We'll see how it develops. It's still very early, so it's hard to say. Seems like one of the AOG 67mm domes are indeed already dead. Wasn't that very fun? It looks... Man, the lamps took out one of my missiles from the original Slabman at launch. That's quite funny. Oh my god! We got a lucky hit and one of the turrets are completely gone. Man, that is is a thin turret neck okay this is why i don't do turret necks by the way this never happens to me wow when i'm unlucky my my uh local weapon controller gets sniped out from inside the turret by a loose frag or something but this will not happen this will not happen all right well some people really like uh, turret necks i don't and I guess uh, maybe I'm biased because I'm only seeing things that prove my point, but, well, I don't do them. In any case, um, let's see here. It could have probably been a good idea to surround the area around the neck with heavy armor instead of alloy and wood. Uh, if you're doing turret necks, I would probably do that. All right. Uh, well, that's not looking too great for uh, Kevin Try because when we disabled one of his main turrets, uh, it's gonna have a much harder time dealing some proper damage there. This cannon is of course online still and it's absolutely possible that he gets a lucky shot. Now, they, fast, they fire so fast, I'll need to stop time to even ride on this thing. I just want to see what type of damage it does. Not sure. Well, again, the payload is a little bit uh, is a little bit lowered uh, because of the uh, sabo head. I think that's a sabo head, though. Yeah, I think so. Or did I mix up the sabo head with the armor piercing head? Or oh, who knows? Who knows? I think that was Sabo. But in any case. Sometimes I'm wrong. But uh, the good thing about me that is that when I'm wrong, I will tell you in a later uh, video about it. So you'll know what's proper. Well, we'll see how this battle ends up. Uh, original Slabman at 91.5% or uh, Kevin Trice HMS Rice at 90.4%. So, uh, it's very, very interesting to see here. It can still go either way. While I do think that Kevin Try did put all of his eggs into these turrets and having APS damage. 
is no way of combating our tiny 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 helicopter but I guess the lambs will take out most of the things um, this little guy throws at him all right This turret is still online for sure. Battle has only been going on for four minutes. Right, this AOG dome is online, but these two are disabled, and that's because they're ammo racked. These are belt feds, so if they get hit by a tiny little thing, we can dive in here a little bit quickly. You can see that basically everything inside of this is kind of gone. Uh, and, well, it has turret armor and that's what's keeping it together. Same with this thing. They're gone. This one has uh, ammo ejectors however, so you can see even though it's damaged, uh, it's still dealing some damage. And when you have Belfelds you can't have uh, ejectors or emergency ejection defuses. Very sad. Alright. <clears throat> Kevin Try at 86, original Slabman at 89. But seems we did damage some of the lamb nodes or the and probably lamb nodes actually. Because now you can see that the original Slabman's mortars are indeed getting through here. And I think that might be very costly for the HMS Rise. I think Kevin Try will indeed um, I actually think that Kevin Cry will lose this <coughs> Sorry, uh, when the lamb nodes are gone because now the mortars are getting through and these mortars aren't very strong but again uh, the deck armor ain't very strong either. Well. Five minutes and uh, the original Slabman is in the lead with a few percentages. It might still go either way, this cannon is still alive and well. And the original Slabman has started to dip a little bit. Well, the swarm that comes from my helicopter looks a little bit more dramatic than it actually is. Are you still shooting? Yes you are. I think that's Super Cab 2 so it's probably doing something. Hmm. All right. Are you firing blanks, sir? I think you're... Poor thing. Okay. 82, 87. The distance is increasing. Is Kevin try? Yeah, we're still doing damage here. I think we need to be underwater to do this. I do believe Kevin Cry has a good chance of uh, sinking the original Slabman and thus winning. If he doesn't, however, I do think that he'll lose this. Right now he's shooting at the turrets, it seems. Yeah. Wow, we're really dipping. <laughs> Look, it doesn't have any barrel. It shoots my armor-piercing frag thing there. I know what that part was on, on Kevin Christ's shell. That's an emergency ejection defuse. That's the, the little part with the red evil eye. All right, Jan. These shells are pretty quick. I do feel they're dealing pretty deep penetrating damage anyways, but I think that the capabilities of the HMS Trice guns might have increased if uh, the shots had uh, um, super cavity, super cavity, uh, super cap, cavity, caps, caps, or whatever they are called. I'm trying to watch out for these shells underwater here because parts of the original Slabman is indeed residing underwater now. Oh, we're getting into weird angle here. Oh no! 
And Kevin Cry didn't set up the turret movement. Didn't set up limitations on moving the turret so it can spin around because now it tries to steer to the right. And he has his superstructure blocking there. So the ship needs to turn like 30 degrees more. And it doesn't. And only after that the turret can start aiming at us again. Yeah, well that's why you need to set up uh, uh, on the uh, turret block the angles the turret can't shoot. You'll need to set it up so that it can turn that way because otherwise you'll lose valuable damage time like this. About that, let's see here. Let's see on these shells here. Is this a base bleeder maybe? Oh, I can't, I can't make out these shots. This is armor piercing solid warhead body frag. Armor piercing high exp, this is frag EMP. Um, no, AP frag EMP, AP uh, high explosive, sabo frag, sabo frag. So there are a little bit of a party mix there. I wonder if these shells really have the same velocity, but seems to be working good enough. Well, that's a nice little party mix. I will agree with that choice. Uh, but due to some of the other shortcomings, we will see if it is indeed enough to win this thing. It really looks like the original Slabman's lambs are able to take out some of these incoming shells, and they are pretty strong. Now, why are you dragging in the helicopter? Ew, is it? This is just a mystery to be honest. Why are we docking? Oh my god, the original slab man the original Slabman has a AI damage, don't we? Oh man, no, health below, oh, it's sinking. It's sinking. Poor thing. Wow, okay. Kevin Trice HMS Rice is indeed the winner of this thing. Looks like during this little session, the original Slabman had some pretty poor results, which is to be expected. And I'm happy about that because this is renovate the slab man, not making it worse. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> not making it worse, making it better. So that's actually a good thing. Well, this means that we have been going through all of these slab mans. Uh, all of the slab mans. And we will be getting back with pitching the Slabman, the winners uh, against each other. And by that, finding out which is the strongest Slabman of them all. So we can promote someone a little bit uh, to uh, Matru's second class instead of third class. Very nice. In any case. Thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll be seeing you in some future videos. This is your host Jim Odes, my worst signing out and huge thanks to the commissioned officers in the army of Jim Odes for supporting the channel. Ooh, getting a little bit uh, cocky here, are we? I think we are. Poor helicopter, I don't think it will survive many seconds. In any case, See you next time. This is your host, Jim Odesim, and I'm signing out. Bye-bye.